Every Christian has peace with God. Every Christian. Now, before you are saved, before you come to the knowledge of Christ, the situation is very, very different. To find out how different it is, all you have to do is look at verse 10 of Romans 5. We were enemies. We were enemies. There's no peace. No peace. We are alienated from the life of God, cut off from God. We hated God in a very divine and pure sense. God hated us. He is angry with the wicked every day, the Scripture says. There was the most severe and permanent, everlasting alienation between the sinner and God. It ends up, for those who don't believe, as eternal hell. That's how alienated we are from God. That is the supernatural and final and terminal extent of our alienation. We were enemies, but we were reconciled to God. How were we reconciled to God? Through the death of His Son. Through the death of His Son. End of verse 11. So, through the Lord Jesus Christ, we have now received the reconciliation. That is the kind of peace we're talking about, first of all, objectively. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, very important portion of Scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 18, God who reconciled us to Himself. Verse 19, God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself by not counting their trespasses against them. How did God do this? How did He reconcile us? By verse 21, He made Him, Christ, who knew no sin, sin on our behalf. So He put our sins on Christ, punished Christ, and since our sins were paid for in full, all we have to do is believe and we are reconciled to God. That's the kind of peace we're talking about. I want to show you one other important text. It's in the first chapter of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, verse 19. It was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in Him, in Christ, and through Him, through Christ, to reconcile all things to Himself. How did He do that? By, by having made peace through the blood of His cross. He made peace through the blood of His cross. Another way to say that is in verse 22. He has now reconciled you in His fleshly body through death in order to present you before Him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. That reconciliation is the peace with God that Romans 5.1 is talking about. Since the rebellion of Adam and Eve, the whole human race has been born alienated from God. The whole human race has been born enemies of God. The whole human race has been born as uh, children of wrath under divine judgment. We are the enemies of God by birth. We're born that way, and we are the enemies of God by choice. We are the enemies of God by heritage, and we're the enemy of, enemies of God by action. Humanity and God are at war. All of us came into the world at war with God. We are part of the world, and James 4 forces friendship with the world is to be the enemy of God. But the gospel of peace is the message that the enemies can be reconciled, and that peace was made through the blood of the cross. That is justification. All sin is forgiven. The rebellion is ended. The enemies have become friends. The enemies have even become sons of God. We are welcomed into God's family and God's presence forever. Jesus made peace by taking on our punishment in full. And we are reconciled, and we now have peace with God forever. We have peace with God forever. Put it another way, forever God is on our side. Forever. 
He will never leave us or forsake us. Forever we will be in the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Forever we will possess the very life of God. Forever. That is an external, eternal reality, never to change. That's objective peace with God.